Well, one Continue of the things, on. one of the things I think in the book that I think is really applicable to marketers, and this is sort of a big concept, so I'll go sort of high level, we yeah. go as deep as you want, yeah. is one of the things I found when you look at all the studies around creativity is researchers actually have really got a good understanding of what makes people like something, which I think is so important for marketers. So here it is, mm. right? When, what they have found is that there's this like specific blend of familiarity and novelty that drives a huge amount of preference and liking. So like if something's too familiar, right, it's kind of boring. Like we've seen it, we've done there, we've been that. But oftentimes when we think about creativity, we think about novelty, originality, innovativeness. But actually, we don't like things like that. Well, if it's too far on the other spectrum, yeah. it's like there's, there's if nobody's proven it, if you go to that new restaurant on Yelp and there's yeah. no reviews, yeah. you're, you're like, not what, going what's there. What's going on? Exactly. And so this is why like Star Wars was so successful. It was literally a Western in space. Like it's the same story arc. <laughs> right. There's good guys, bad guys. Wow. They're like chasing into the uh -huh. Death Star, you know, whatever. And so. No, this is really important. We talk is, about this a lot, which is like pattern matching, 100%. which is most people, most marketers just still forget to do that. They're like, oh, I got an idea. I'm going to make it up. No. No. Do you know what, do you know what the great marketers do before they go and create the next video or write the next article or write the next book? They go and find other examples. 100%. It's not copying. It's going and find what has been proven, Updating. what already works. Kanye West literally just tweeted about this. He just this. tweeted about it. just tweeted about this. Yeah. And I posted it on and my I was Instagram because like, I, was like, I said, oh my God, it's part of my book campaign. Same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? And now it's so much so that like we have this conversation so many times in the marketing team here at drift we're like now if you don't go and find it, i want to know okay hey alan this is great that you wrote this new article who was your inspiration for this yeah. article yeah i don't have what what well i would be going and looking at like what headlines have already been popular what format yeah. has been popular what video so that's a huge and piece. one of the great ways so there's actually a lot of interesting studies around this with music that i think really make this point well so they basically played a song for someone they've never heard before and they played it over mm. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And what happened was the first time you hear the song, you're like, what is this? Right. The second or third time, you're like, okay, this is not that bad. The 10th time, you're like, I love this song. <laughs> and the 15th time, you're like, please stop playing Hotline Bling. Yep. Like, we're over this, yep. right? Some people. Yeah, so, that, yeah it's a whole thing. Yeah. And so basically what they found, this is why the book's called The Creative Curve, is there's this bell curve relationship between familiarity and preference. 100%. The more you see something, the more you like it, but only up until a point. Yeah. Then you get bored and you want something new and more novel. I look. I actually have this in a slide. This is. Th I'm genuinely enjoying this conversation, which is great. Uh, I have this in a slide for a talk that I give. Uh, I stole it from Andrew Chen, who who was growth at Uber. Yeah. And a bunch of, he calls it the law of shitty click throughs. Yes, I've seen this. Right. I yeah. love this chart. It's the law of shitty click throughs, and it's the same reason why if you're any good at Facebook ads, that frequency is so important. Yeah. Right. The frequency is like the amount of times you see an ad. Five or six is a sweet spot. One, it's not very good. They have no idea what Ten, yeah. 15, you're, you're showing you're it done. too much, right? So it's the same thing. And they've seen this. What's amazing is scientists have studied this, and they found this bell curve relationship when you look at paintings, advertising. But here's one of the things I think is really interesting. So scientists have found this bell curve relationship, but only for complex things. When something's really simple, like your logo color, yeah. like your logo or your brand colors, yeah. it's actually the more you see it, the more you like it indefinitely. Right. And the reason why is that scientists call it perceptual fluency. And it's basically the idea with things that are very simple. We basically just say, oh, we've seen it before. We know it. And the fact that it's so easy to process, we mistake that for liking it. So that's why in marketing and branding, like colors are so important. Logos are so important. It's because yeah. these subtle things. Is that all in the book? It's all in the that, book. Those lessons that those you're lessons talking are about? Those lessons are okay. all in the book. No, because it's cool because I, I didn't do, I didn't, I mean, I didn't have a copy. So I didn't do a, I didn't do a deep dive. But I didn't expect it to have you to have so much like psychology yeah. related lessons, which to me is actually, that's the most exciting stuff. Like the creativity stuff is one thing, yeah. but I, we love learning about the things that are rooted in, in science. Totally. Like we love, you know, uh, Robert Cialdini's book, obviously the six principles yeah. there, like baking all that stuff yeah, into so your marketing. The is. book, so going on the familiarity novelty thing, what I tried to do is I've read a lot of business books and my biggest hangout with business books, is I love like narrative storytelling. But there's usually not enough science and every chapter just sort of is an anecdote supporting the original thesis. Yep. So this book, the entire book, every chapter is like a new concept and it's all science supported. So there's like 5,000 pages of notes at the end, all that kind of stuff. Made it a pain in the ass to write, yeah. but is like hopefully like actually actionable.